I'm the Commissar, and we are watching Forged Alliance Forever. Today, we have the Stars of Tomorrow, up and coming players, none of whom have yet reached 800 rating. They're going to be playing on the map Twin Rivers, quite a well known map. Let's see how they get on. Now, I like ladder games. In a ladder game, you just have a hot team and a cold team, nice and easy. The hot team are in the northeast, the cold team are in the southwest. Let's meet hot team first. On the left flank, we have Helmand, 670 rated, he's Seraphim in Burgundy. Moving across, we have Dante85, 534 rated, he's UEF in Mucus Brown. Further on we have Bezleki, I'm going to call him Bez this game. He's 386 rated, he's also UEF and he's in orange. And last but not least, beginning to head forward there, we can see Legendary, who is 345 rated, he's Cybron, and he's in red. And their mirrors on the code team. Still in his base here, we have Nezloy, 734 rated, he's Eon, in blue. In the first of the central positions and walking forward there, this is Shakers, 673 rated and Seraphim, he's in Cyan. Moving on across, this is Roa of 12, Roero F12, I'll call him Roa. He's 417 rated, he's also Eon and he is in Mauve. And last but not least, on the other flank and still in his base, this is Chappie, today's lowest rated player, he's 59 rated, he is Seraphim in Baby Blue. So we got two UEF, one Sera, one Cybron versus two Eon and two Sera. Helmand and Legend already pretty far forward, which is good, and Legend starts the gun upgrade, but there's no way he can afford that. Indeed, there isn't. Look at that. And he's paused it instantly. Now, one thing we can notice about the early move orders, I don't think either team knows about the big clutches of mass here. Normally, you'd want to send one of your early engineers towards these clutches of mass, but nobody's tried it just yet. And these side plateaus, both... Helmand and Nesloy have gone for an edge bird. You can't walk up onto these plateaus. You either have to airdrop them or edge bird them, and both teams have gone for one plateau each with an edge bird. Now, you've got Helmand coming quite far forward here, setting up production, that's nice. And he's queuing up what I expect is going to be a nice little loop of a little bit of everything to make sure he's covered for all circumstances. I can empathise. Much more production planned next to him for Dante. Will he have the eco to support it? And I also like this position from Legend. Chappy coming forward but not setting up any forward production just yet. Oh, and somebody's noticed that mass. Somebody has pung it. Are we going to see any reclaim orders headed out in that direction? That's by far the best concentration of reclaim on the map. There's a bit around the back, which will be safe for each team, and a bit on each side. But this is the main contested area, and we've got a reclaim order out from... Dante, although it's going to stop to eat all these trees first. Looks like Legend has cancelled his gun upgrade, but Hellmand has started his. It's coming along slowly. How's his eco looking? Oh, he's pretty power stored, and he needs to get a few more of these NGs reclaiming trees. 
and he might be forced to cancel if Chappie comes in any closer because Chappie's got more spam, he's got to come. That could be a problem for Hellman, but Chappie isn't pushing. If only Chappie came a bit nearer, if only he knew there was basically nothing here to stop him. But he's not going in. Literal engagement over here as scouts are picked off by Legend. And a few more tanks are messing, but Legends come ought to be able to see those off. But now Chappie's going in, and this looks like a mistake. Chappie is going in with the tanks first rather than his comm. His comm can absorb the damage, but even standing still, Hellman's comm can just kill off these tanks from Chappie, and Chappie's forced to a, into a retreat, and he's not going to be able to force Hellman to cancel. If he'd gone in with the comm first, he might have been. But Hellman is going to finish that gun, and even if he weren't, he's got Dante coming in in support. Chappie still has the more spam, and it could be that Roa will be providing some support from here. Actually, these are Chappie's factories too, so Chappie's been quite big on the expansion. But will it be enough against two comms? I don't think so. Hellman has the gun upgrade, and he pushes forward. Dante thinks Hellman has this in hand, and Dante is heading off to engage Roa. Hellman dodges around a bit. That's a lot of tanks and a com, but there's nothing really that I think is actually going to threaten Hellman, especially if Chappie backs off like this. Down here, Dante is coming in towards Roa. Roa is bringing his com up. And Dante is naked, but he's getting damage done on the spam, and he has some spam of his own coming in. Hellman's still taking pot shots at Chappie's units there. Chappie is down into the yellow and can't really afford to engage, especially against a guncom. And Hellman is just eating up his tanks essentially for free. Dante's fallen back, he's gonna lose this little spam push. Roa is in position to fight it off. Here on the other side, we saw Shaker's notification that he'd got the gun upgrade, and he has. He's still being a little careful about advancing forward, but he's sending out his comm to the front with the spam only coming in if an engagement starts. That's nice. I like it. And Shaker's is actually pushing in now he's taking out some of these mexes and he'll be able to take out this production a ping is thrown down oh chappie started the wrong gun upgrade he started the very expensive splash upgrade and cancelled it legend is not happy with bez's play here as you can see there threatening to foe him and legend is definitely being forced back by this gun com decent amounts of spam from both Shakers and from Nezroy. He's defending with a bomber, which is nice, I like that, especially against Eon, whose tanks are the only ones who will die in one hit from a T1 bomber. But that aside, it's not going to stop Legend from losing this position. As Shakers advances. And Legend might actually be in danger here from that gun com. He's down to half health, Shakers is uninjured, and Shakers might come into range. But Dante is seeing this threat, and he's bringing in quite a lot of his spam. And that should be enough to stop Shakers' spam here, because Dante just has more. And he's swarming forward as Legend backs away. There's a couple of tanks sneaking into Legend's base here, but not really enough to do any damage. And this is where we're going to have to worry, because Dante is swarming in. Shakers is running out of tanks. Dante has quite a lot, and he is going to swarm around Shakers' com. However, Shakers does have the gun. He's got a bit more spam coming in. I think he's going to survive, but it might be close if Dante focuses. And we've also got T2 on the field out here from Bez. We have a pillar coming in to chase it up. Shakers, meanwhile, has been cut off by the tanks from 
Dante, but rather than try and focus the comp, which they might have got, he's on half health. And there's now support from Roa coming in, which will probably handle it. If these pillars from bed keep moving so the further shots don't hit them, then they could get a lot of Roa's units cleared up. But it looks like Shakers is going to be safe. On the other side, Hellman has advanced a bit with some of his spam. Roa is sending units across, trying to get some hits in, but Hellman, with the gun and with three vets, has more than enough to deal with these T1 units. Both his foes are getting upgrades. Chappie, badly damaged from earlier, is getting the gun upgrade. Roa already has the range upgrade and is getting the speed upgrade on his Eon gun. So if those two are able to sandwich Hellman, he could be in for a nasty surprise. Dante is still doing very well on the tank production, but his com is still naked and as far as I know, Dante is still at T1 everywhere. Any, check, any tech to check other than that T2 we noted from Bears. I don't think... Oh no, we do have T2 out from Roa. And from Shakers. Urshis from Shakers at this stage could be very powerful. Meanwhile, however, Hellamand is coming in on Roa. Roa is pushing back. He's got a lot of Arty in there, which is getting some nice hits in on Hellamand's com. But with the gun and with Roa's spam up front rather than Roa's com up front, Hellman is again able to get a lot of damage done. Quick note off to the side here, I like this. Chappie is getting naval yards down, and we haven't got any of the sort from the other team. Seraphim missile cruisers could be very powerful firing from the river on this map. Roa is under threat here as the units of Dante swarm in to support Hellman, and Roa is going to have to fall back. He's got the gun and he should be able to hold this off, especially with the production from here and with this support from Shakers. But he's got to be careful, he's already on half health. Meanwhile, Chappie, with the gun upgrade, is coming back to fight off Hellman. And he's doing well, but Dante and Hellman have surrounded him with tanks and with Dante's com coming into the mix as well. It could be a bit of an unpleasant situation for Chappie. Roa's gonna lose this entire forward position. Wait, no, that wasn't Roa who had it, that was Chappie. Chappie's gonna lose this entire forward position as Hellman starts work on Nano. Both he and Chappie are deep down into the yellow, but Hellman's all the way back here, Dante hasn't got any upgrades. I think most of this will be cleared up. But Dante is going for a run by down here and he is getting units into the unprotected rear base of Roa. Roa is producing flares here to defend, which is nice, they'll come off the blocks quickly. And Shakers has also sent a few units back, but all the units he sends back aren't going to the front. This T2 mech could be a nice kill for Dante if he's able to get it. Doubling down on the point defence here, Roa will be safe from future attacks. But that's quite an investment. And we do have these two tanks still alive, trying to make it into the back. Meanwhile, Legend has moved forward to set up a stealth firebase here. I don't think that Code Team know about that, so that could be a nasty surprise for them. And Bez has got a decent number of T2 tanks pushing in on Shakers. Well, now they know about that. Shakers does have gun and nano now, and but he's coming in under Cerberus fire from turrets he didn't even know were there. And he falls back a bit, but not before driving away Bez. Meanwhile, that run by from Dante has claimed a mex down here, and if he's quick before Shakers notices his units have stopped, he might get another. Roa pushing back towards his 
forward base. That's a lot of reclaim there. Look at that. One, two, I'd say there's around 5,000 reclaim in that patch to pick up. And so if either team can just get their engines in and start eating, that would be delicious. Looks like Hellamand is trying to, but he's going to be driven back by Chappie's Com. And those tanks have been cleared up. Engines are on their way to rebuild. Looks like we've got a bit of a lull here, so let's have a brief look at Eco. Code team are ahead by 30. It's pretty close, but Code team do have a lead, but although Total Mass is pretty closely tied. Nice balance from Shakers, though he looks like he's relying on an ally for power. Very nice from Roa. In fact, I have nothing to complain about with Code team. Nor with Bez. Hellman needs power though. Hellman is a bit short on power even though he's finished the nano upgrade. So I think that he needs to do something about that. Legend massively overspending match. Look at that. He's only producing 30. He's spending 140. That's crazy. Dante quite well balanced. So Legend needs to throttle back his mass production and eco up a bit. Hellman needs to build some power. Everybody else nice and balanced. And Nezlo just finished the sensors, so he can now see exactly what's going on there. Now, Dante has just given all his spam to Hellman. I like that. It means Hellman can micro it. And Hellman does have Ilshis coming into support, which at this stage of tech are going to be pretty nice. He is taking hits, but he's finished Nano and he's got four Vets. So this could actually be quite a brutal incursion. There's a couple of Obsidians out here for Roa, but not really very much. And I don't think Chappie has T2 at all. Chappie could be in danger here if he just gets swarmed by all of this, and especially if Hellman brings his Com across. Which he does. I don't think Chappie's getting out of this. Boom, he is not. Our lowest rated player is taken out at 16 minutes 45 by Hellman. However, the Combomb takes out immense amounts of spam. Nezeloy will inherit. He is on the other side and he may have difficulty managing two bases at once. But we will see if he chooses to give it to Roa, which might not be a bad decision. Meanwhile, Shakus is leaving some forces over here to help defend. Quick check on this side, Nezloy is coming forward to try and stop this creep. However, the arty is going to be a problem for him. He's being tickled as he puts up a stealth field generator. But that's been seen and it just gets shot by the Cerberus. And Hellmand is back in on the push, as is Dante and Roa. However, Roa has a decent amount of T2 here. There are Ilshis from Shakers. There are Obsidians from Roa. And Dante is still only sending T1. Does he have... In fact, Dante still doesn't have any tech on the field. He's just got this T1 spam. However, Hellman is choosing to push in. The com is right here. Hellman and Roa both have the equivalent guns, but Hellman has T2. Are we going to see com on com, mano a mano action? It looks like the answer might be yes, and if Roa or Shake has moved in though, he could get the advantage despite Hellman's nano. Oh, and Roa has the advanced range, so he does actually outrange Hellman's com. Hellman could now be in danger. However, we have Shakus pushing on the right against this quite significant firebase of Bez. Good damage done by Nezroy taking out that forward firebase of Legion, but it's still up there. The fight goes back and forth. And Hellman looks to be falling back. But Shakers looks like he's got enough T2 in there, along with his upgraded com, which now has the region over and is supporting these Yoshis with that region over. It looks like he's in. It looks like Shakers is going to break that position. 
and Shakers is also reinforcing, Bez could really be in trouble here. Those artillery pieces will be a lovely thing to take out. On the left, though Hellamant has retreated, Dante is going for a massive run bet by past Chappie's old base. And there's a, a few T1 units in there, and Dante is still mainly T1, but if he can get some units around the back, that would be delicious. And look at that, that entire forward position, heavily fortified from Bez, has just been smacked by Shakers. This T2 mechs, this T2 mechs, and this T2 radar would all be amazing pickups. Does Shakers... He does know about them because he's shooting them. Is he actually going to kill them though? That radar particularly, I think, would be worth it. No. He's just pushing straight into Bez base. And this run by, look at that, that's very good. It's going to kill a couple of mexes here, and some of these are cap T2 mexes. That would be very nice. Bez just has. He, ooh, we did get the radar. Nice. Bez does just have a line of PD, and Legend is also PD creeping this attack. Shakers really needs to concentrate and start moving his units so that they're able to engage optimally, but it looks like he's going to fall back. He has, however, noticed this mex and is planning to take it out. And this run by is still going. This mex is dead. This mex is dead. This T2 mex looks like it's about to be killed. Though it may be that Dante retreats before he's able to get any damage done. Ooh, 340 hit points, but Nezoi has been able to push him back. And now there are ravages as well up because Bez is at T3. And there's no way that Shakers is taking that. And this could be a game changer. Shakers, already damaged by the Ravages, now has Percy's after him. Bez is actually churning out the T3 deduction. On the other side, Hellamand has advanced Nano on the way. It's a long slow upgrade, but with five vets, that's going to make him almost unstoppable. And you know I love a good Sarah Rambo com. Quick overview, we haven't really looked at the side islands since we saw those edge build factories, and the side islands have gone mainly uncontested, one for each team all very fair, all very balanced. Eco-wise, very even for both Total Mass Collected and Eco Production. I slightly prefer Hot Team's map control, though Shakers looks like he has something to say about it. The Ravager Creep is now advancing from Bez, though, and backed up by Percy's. Shakers is really going to have to watch out for that. Dante is trying a run by again, He's got some of his units stuck at the bottom of the cliff, which I think might be a mistake. However, that's a lot of both tanks and arty, and Nesloy is well ready for this. I don't think Dante is going to get any work done with those. Shakers is looking set to push again, and he has done a lot of damage to that Percy. His comm, with its five vets, is on full health. But this Ravager ranges so much, he's going to have a real problem. He does, however, take out Legion's forward base. However, we could be about to see why attack the front Ravagers when you can just go around the side. And Legion has just got up to T3 himself. Will he be able to keep it? He's spent an awful lot of eco on these line after line of T2 point defence. But with Gun, Nano, and this support of Regen Ilshis, it's going to be hard for Legend to hold on. Legend has also dipped into the water, and she's got a T3 Engineer safe back here, which is nice. But he's not going to have the eco to support a Navy if this push keeps on going. And Legend's base is going to get trashed here. Sure, there's a Percy in, but a single overcharge from Shakers, assuming he's got... Yeah, look at that immense amount of power storage he has available to him. He could just overcharge those Percys, as he did, and Legend is going to lose his base. These PDs are still up, and Shakers will have to be careful, especially if... Dante or Bez are able to swarm him, more persons coming in, but one at a time, I don't think that's going to do a great deal of damage, and Legend has lost all of his four core mexes, 
Um, Legend is down to just 22 mass per tick. However, Hot Team are actually still in a reasonable eco position, and that's mainly thanks to Bez, who has 150 mass per tick, twice as much as any of his teammates, and definitely higher than Shakers or Roa on Color Team. At the moment, he's investing all of that into point defense, which I can understand, but point defense can be beaten from the air, and I'm not seeing a great deal of anti-air, I'm seeing a flak, and point defense can, of this niche, can also be beaten by XBs. That said, there aren't any UEF on the core team, so Fatboys, which outrange ravages, aren't available at this time. Legend, however, has finished T2 Navy, and it's building slowly because of the eco damage he just took, but it, he is building a Destro, which will be quite fun, but there's no Navy for Code Team in this river, so that could pay off, though they don't know about it thanks to this cheeky little radar that Nuzloy has put up here. On the other river, Nuzloy hasn't really made any use of the Navy that Chappie started, which has mean that Hellmand can come in here and he's just going straight for T2 Navy here and he's sending engineers to assist. I like that play. And Shaker's also going for advanced nano. Hellman's finished his and with those five vets, look at that. 50,000 hit points and it also takes some time to acknowledge the 162 kills on Hellman's com. 109 from Shakers, not too sloppy either. Now, we look to have a push from Roa supported by Nezloy using the units in Chappie's old base. There's still only T1 in Chappie's base, so these aren't likely to get much done, but there's now T3 for Roa, who has an immense amount of T3 production here. And Harbies, Shield Disruptors, this actually could be a threat for Hellman, and Dante is still just churning T1 units. He has now got T3 in his base, and he's got his first T2 army, which is a big horde of pillars heading forward. But it won't be in time, I don't think, to change the effect of this. And Hellman is getting swarmed, but Hellman has double nano. His comm is extremely hard to destroy. We're talking like experimental levels of hard to destroy here. Hellman's lost his entire firebase. He might have to flee here. He's already on half health. He'd be dead if it weren't for the double nano. But Dante's T2 is finally catching up and that's going to help out. And now it's only a few units left, I think that's going to be easy for Hellmand and Dante to clear up. Now Legend has pointed out that the other team have T3 air, which could be a delicious counter to all those ravages from Bez. However, no sooner has this push been cleared up than we have another wave of T3 units coming in from Roa. And these could actually just, with Hellmand over here, not able to help out, these could do quite a significant amount of damage to Dante. Look at the eco though, Bez now on 200 eco, that's almost twice what anyone else has. That's pretty massive. And as if that weren't enough, sure, this position is going down, but I just saw cruiser missile fire. We have our first Sarah missile cruiser out for Hellmand, and that's going to make life difficult here for Nezloy. He could stop it easily with, like, a couple of subs from these naval yards, but I don't think he's noticed it yet. And Dante has lost this entire forward position, Hellman has lost this one, and this mech goes down. Sure, there were the ravages here, but what are they going to do as we just get a run-by straight into Dante's base? Dante is putting up ravages of his own now in defence, but I don't know if he's going to get any of them finished before this wave of harpies just come shoving their way in and this is gonna hurt. T3 build power being taken out for Dante 
is Com, who is still completely naked, just freeze. However, I think that there's enough defensive... Actually, I was going to say there was defensive firepower, but there isn't. These Percy's coming in from Bez will help a lot. However, Dante's lost one of his core mixes. Instead of trying to just do damage, Roa is focusing on Bez's counter-attack and Roa's attack finally dies. However, that was nice damage from Roa, who's got another force pushing in just behind it. Ooh. Well, that was exciting. However, this is going to be quite a problem for Cold Team as the missile cruisers rain down on Nezroy's inherited base. Eon TMDs are great, but he's going to need to throw quite a few of them up and his comm, with its T2 engineering suite, comes to do just that, along with these T3 engineers. This second push is not going to get much done. It's just about in range of the Ravagers. There's a decent horde of Percy's from Bears and Dante is producing Percy's of his own. However, we have a Rambo SCU coming out and against any other target, that would be amazing. But Hellman has his shield, which has just been taken down and destroyed, but he also has double nano. And against double nano guncom, I think a single Rambo SCU will not be enough, though it's going to hurt Hellman quite a lot. Like, any other comp, yeah, that, that had gone in against Dante's comp, Dante would be dead. That could probably have taken out a lot of these forward point defences for Bez, but unfortunately, he picked on the wrong guy. Realising this, he's falling back and now there's an Ophium coming in to help out. He's going to try and get some eco damage done, but it's not going to be any good. Boom, down goes the Rambo comp. Nice try, wrong target. And Nezoi is using Zooey's to try and counter these cruisers. Which could be good if the cruisers stop moving, but Hellman seems to be aware, which is nice, that the way to counter a Zooey is just to move. However, there is no direct fire on these cruisers. Nonetheless, they're getting hits in. And the destroyer that is queued up at that naval factory isn't actually going to be needed. Nice play from Hellman. Fat boy out from Bez. And that is going to be hard to stop. It's been seen. But with this ridiculous firebase here, it's also going to be hard to push. This is a large army, but it's mainly T2 from Shakers. Does Shakers actually have T3 production? Yes, he does. And we have got a couple of T3 RT units in here, and Seraphim T3 mobile shields, which are great. A couple of Ophiums, but this is still mainly Ilshis. And with Ophiums in Hellman's Com, it's now going to be very hard to stop this naval base remaining entrenched. However, this is lovely from Legend. Look, he's just bombarded this entire side island from Nezroy and he's going to be able to hit from out of range all of Nezroy's stuff on the land. Nezroy has started a GC, but that's nowhere near finished. These miasmas might be able to range it, but they're not going to be able to shoot over... Okay, I take that back. They are going to be able to shoot over that hill. And they might get a few nice hits in on this navy. And they're going to have to, otherwise Nezloy is going to lose a lot. However, offense is the best defense, and we have a massive, massive code team push. Harbies from Nezloy, Harbies from Roa. Or this entire army we were speaking about, including the Com from Shakers, who now with his re regen aura as well, outdoes even Hellman with 52,500 hit points. The fat boy from Bez wisely kites back, and I don't blame him one little bit. This is a massive amount of ravages, but this is a massive amount of troops, and they are just laying down the pain. The front line is just going to crumble. This is actually... the Ilshis are actually a very good response to ravages, because by numbers they can just swarm around the ravages, and the ravages can't shoot in all directions at once. 
Dante is massing up here at the top, but he needs to push down in order to make a difference, and if Shakers just swings in the direction of the fatty, then he'll just outrun most of Dante's army. I'm enjoying offense being the best defense, but this fat boy is not yet under threat. Bez's defenses are back to their rear line here, this line of ravagers, and it's mainly only the Ilshis left, but Ilshis are still pretty tough. However, we've got to watch Hellmand as well here. Hellman, backed up by his Cruels of Fire and the Fiorthiums, is advancing in person on this base. Meanwhile, the Urshis continue to push in, and that's still an awful lot of Urshis, and the Ravagers here are all dead, apart from this one way back here. Bez is building more, but he might actually be in danger. However, on this side, Roa has defended, and sure, Nuzzle is going to lose quite a lot here, but that's a lot of TP from Roa. Hellmand with his mighty double nano is going to be hard to kill, but is he actually going to be under threat? I think he might, that's a lot of T3. This base, all its mass has been completely cleared up, and the fat boy is going to survive, the last Ilshi dies. Hellmand is under fire. He's got his cruisers and that one Destro in defence, but I don't think that's going to be enough. He's into the red. He's dodging with that. No, he's just going down. Boom. So he's he's wiped out that base, but at what cost? And at what cost to the other team as well? Look at that. And as if that weren't bad enough for Nesloy, Nesloy has only his comms mass. One mass. Because on this side, Legend has been walking up the beach with Salem. He smashed this down. And he is coming, stomping in with Salem's because, you guessed it, Cybran's doing the Cybran thing. Shakus is coming to try and drive them back with his army. This is an awful lot of Salem's though. Ten Salem's. Will it be a match for a T3 army, especially if the army is able to swarm around the Salem's and shoot them from behind where the Salem's can't fire? One Salem down. And the Salem's retreat to the water. I think that might have been a mistake, because now now look, they're not now they're not able to fire apart from these couple at the side. And he's losing more of them as we speak. The Othiums are also faster on land than the Salem's, and we have a chicken out from Shakers. But sensibly that's not chasing the Salem's. That looks like it's just okay, maybe it is. We'll see what it does in a second. But look at this, all but two of those ten Salems are dead. Lovely play from Shakus to defend. But Nezroy still has the problem of having nothing left. And Hot Team's eco lead is now gigantic, especially as Legend has been able to colonise this side island. Now, the Fat Boy is coming forward again from Bears. But now we've got a chicken to worry about, and it's not targeting the chicken, which makes me wonder. They don't know that that's a chicken. Now they do. And the fat boy's default targeting immediately shoots it, and the fat boy turns to run away. There are ravagers, and you'd think that with decent kiting and a bit of support, that would be enough to stop the chicken. But some good dodging and also just not a great deal of supporting fire means that the chicken isn't taking a large number of hits. And very boldly, Shaker's com is still coming up behind all this. And the fat boy shield goes down. Boom! The fatty dies. There's a lot of ravages now in Bez's actual main base and still more going up. So this chicken isn't going to get any more done, it's just going to die, only the Iron Storm will kill anything. So that I think was a bit of a waste from Shakers, he could have fallen back. And nice anti-nuke there, I was just wondering, would a nuke work to crack this base? But no, Bez thought of that. However, rather than crack Bez, poor old Legendary is again under fire, as Shakers charges into his base, a lovely.
and a legend is gonna also lose almost everything. Roa doing the damage now with his harpies, but they're gonna die to the massive amount of point defense in Bez's base. On the other side, Dante has not been idle. There's a big horde of Perseids coming towards Roa's front line, and thanks to these cruisers, there's no way that Nez is going to be able to convert this back. Or oh, that said, Roa, since Nez only has this little outpost remaining on this side, the Perseids come in. However, this is a very tough front line from Bez. He's got support commanders as well, but this one is Raz, not Rambo. This will also dump immense amounts of reclaim for whichever side wins. The comm is being hung, and Roa obviously recognises the threat. He does have heavy shield, so with this amount of point defence and a few clever overcharges, he might be able to get the damage done. However, these lightning tanks and some of the Percy's are just going for a run by, and if we get straight into the back of Roa's base, then I think he's going to be in for a rough time. In they come. The Rascoms are defending, but the cruisers are in range of this as well, and this is brutal, and that eco lead is now immense, and we mustn't forget that the Salems have been being built up here, and Nezoi, he's got a tiny bit back but how long is it gonna last in the face of all this this however could be crucial there's basically no air not a single air factory for the for, for the hot team and while we haven't seen much air production coming out of cold team they have at least had some air until those cruisers destroyed it and that means there's no fighters no ASFs to defend against this Awasa bomber so that could be a beautiful play for Shakers, like bomb out the cruisers, bomb out the navies, and then go and hit. Well, Dante is producing an awful lot of these lightning tanks, but there's probably a couple of clever hits you could get in, like this plateau is undefended, here is undefended. That washer could do massive heaps of damage. But co team, they're not in a good spot. Will it finish? The experimental pressure is ramping up. Another fatty is coming out from Bez. And we've got a chicken nearly done from Dante. Shake is still on the front lines. I like it. Supporting these Othiums. And the fatty advances. His front lines are going to be under pressure. And look at these guys getting close in. They're going up from 4,700 to 5,640 hit points when they get close enough to the com. Thanks to that region over. That's very nice. And this pressure, how are they going to answer it? These artillery pieces might be a nice answer, as might static T2 RT, which would also help with the navy down here. But Dante is now going for battleships maybe here, he's on the way to T3 navy. Shake is feeling he has to fall back in the face of the fatty, and if he loses this T3 mechs, that would hurt. Hot team now 2-1 to one ahead in eco, but... The experimental bomber is into the green. Could it be the means to stage a comeback? Now, Legend is bringing another Salem fleet onto land, and after its repulsion the first time, you might think he was wary of doing it again, but of course, with this fatty, there's now a lot less that Shakers can do to defend. 
Nezroy is just falling back a bit. There's some good defensive work up here for Roa, but he's still got to rebuild a bit. And the Arsewasher finishes. Its first target must surely, surely be this Horde of Salems, and it looks like that is indeed... Okay, don't know where it's going. Where's it going? Okay, I'm still betting on the first target being this Horde of Salems. And indeed it is. The bomb is dropped. There are now two fatties out from Bears. But, kaboom, the entire Horde of Salems taken out in one hit nearly 19,000 mass killed for the washer. There's a lot of teeth for the air in here, but the washer is getting... well, not anymore there isn't. And the first fatty takes massive damage. Shakers prepares to counter push. Boom. But that fatty had got its shield back up and it's not dead yet. However, the washer has taken a lot of damage. I'm not sure whether to survive another pass. And Roa, meanwhile, has to worry about this army coming in on the other side. However, that's surely going to kill that fat boy. Boom, down it goes. And this army will definitely inflict a few hits on the shield of this fatty, which might be enough for the washer to kill it. However, Dante has swarmed in with these T3 anti-air tanks and the washer isn't going to survive another pass unless it's well microed. Which, unfortunately for Shakers, it isn't. That's just going down. Down it goes. Boom. Right into Bez's base. And it doesn't even kill anything with its crash. The Fat Boy shield was taken down, but not enough to hurt matters. And there's now that chicken from Dante, backed up by a heap of Percy's charging into Roa's base. I think the death of that Arasa bomber is the death knell for Koa team. It was their last best hope for a comeback, and it didn't work. Roa is under pressure. I don't think he can survive. He's got a double shield, he's got a line of point defences, but that chicken is barely scratched, and this huge, huge horde of Percy's would be enough to deal with a com, even if it weren't. Shakers is sending in far from the side, but he can't get too close to that chicken without just dying himself. And down goes Roa. Boom, Shakers' com immediately pumped. Thanks to Shaker's help, Nezroy finishes that GC he started ages ago. Will that be enough to stop the chicken? But we also have a Novak satellite out from Bez and it's targeting the com. Shaker's pushes towards the chicken, but he's just under vast heaps of Percy fire and Shaker's is down. Nezroy inherits everything, one against three. He's got a GC. But do you think we're in for a majestic comeback? My money's not on him, looking at the eco. He has a 3 or 4 to 1 mass deficit. And the chicken is stuck over on the other side here. This GC is getting hits in on the Percy's, which are essentially unprotected. A few of them getting sucked up by the claws there. And most of the Percy's are dead. But they've taken the GC down to half health and this chicken with its four vets just walks around the corner and opens fire. And the writing is surely on the wall. Because even if this, this GC didn't die to the chicken, which it's going to, there's another fatty coming in. Down goes the chicken. And that is that. The fat metaphorical lady has sung and Neslo is being tickled by a few corsairs from Legendary, which feels almost like an insult when you've got these Percy's and stuff on the field. However, Neslo agrees and resigns. Good game. It's fun to see players of my own skill level occasionally, and I enjoyed some of those bold commander charges. In the end, I think it was Bez's eco that won it because Shaker's attacks didn't quite get through and do the damage they needed, not even that chicken. So which of these up and coming players do you think is going to be the pro of tomorrow? Tell me in the comments below. While you're down there, don't forget to like, 
subscribe, and obey. I'm the Commissar. I will see you next time.